Dr. Paul Pettit holds degrees from the University of Kansas, Moody Bible Institute's Advanced Studies Program, and the Master of Theology and Doctor of Ministry degrees from Dallas Theological Seminary. Paul serves as the Director of Career Services and teaches in the Departments of Pastoral Ministries, Educational Leadership and Ministries, and Media and Worship here at DTS. Paul's background includes experience as a sportscaster, learn something new every day, Paul, uh, author and speaker. He and his wife, Pamela, have five children, three of whom, well, now two, but he's had three in college all at the same time. One of them just graduated. So uh, we'll applaud you for that in just a moment. <laughs> he's uh, clothed and in his right mind, and that's, <laughs> that needs to be applauded. Um, he has co-authored, congratulations, you're going to be a dad. Paul has also written other books such as Dynamic Dads, How to Be a Hero to Your Kids, and Foundations of Spiritual Formation. He enjoys developing emerging leaders. He enjoys golf. And I know for a solid fact, he enjoys barbecue. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Paul Pettit to chapel today. Loose lips sink ships. That was World War II advice regarding troop movements among family members, friends. They found out that gossip sometimes cost real lives. Families would write home letters, we may be going to this town or we may be going on this ship. And that word would spread even among wives or girlfriends back home, family members. And it could cost a serviceman or woman his or her life. Loose lips sink ships. The British got involved too and they made their own posters. Theirs wasn't quite as cool. Theirs said, careless talk costs lives. And the Germans, always piling on the guilt, theirs said, shame on you, blabbermouth. <laughs> <laughs> but there were posters all over America during World War II, loose Lips sink ships. And if this advice was important for the military, those going into the service, how much more for you and I, who are going into church work, who are going into ministry work? Gossip, a lack of confidentiality, it can destroy a ministry. It can bring great harm to a church. How are you at keeping confidences? Are you a gossip? Or are you known as someone who can be trusted with sensitive information? I think maybe we should have our own poster back here in the corner. Idle chatter destroys churches. Turn with me in your Bible to Proverbs 11.13. Proverbs 11.13. A short chapel, a short amount of time, and a short verse. Proverbs 11, 13. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. Let me read that again. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. Two types of people in this verse. One you should aspire to become. First, the gossip. Look at what it says there. The gossip goes around. Do you see that? goes around. That's an ongoing action. It's not necessarily just a one-time event. It's not just, oh, I shouldn't have said that. This is a lifestyle. This is a morning talk show where the topic is gossip. Also, you see, they're telling secrets. They were asked to keep the matter private, but they knew they should not be relaying this information, but it was just too juicy. Here in Texas, sometimes that gossip is preceded by the words, bless his heart. <laughs> you ever heard that? You ever know what's coming next is, you know, I thank the Lord for little Carol. You know, bless her heart, but did you hear that she... Or sometimes it comes out like this. I probably shouldn't tell you this, but <laughs> let me just relay this to you, you know, as a prayer request. Don't promise to keep a confidence. Sometimes someone might ask you, look, I, 
I'm going to tell you this, but I can only tell you this if you promise to keep it a secret. Don't do that. It could be an item of physical abuse which must be reported to authorities. Any type of abuse like that, physical abuse, must be reported to authorities by law. So that's the gossip. Don't be the gossip. But there's another person in this verse, and that's the gatekeeper. They can keep the secret. They are able to do that. They are able to keep a confidence. They've been disciplined to do that. They've practiced that. Confidence is one that keeps or protects, such as a fortress, a castle, especially the strongest and securest part of a medieval castle was called what? The keep. Are you able to keep a confidence? And what about that word confidence? The word con means with, and the word fide means faith. If I share something with you, are you able to faithfully keep that to yourself? I have my own struggle with gossip. When I was first employed here, I was in a meeting. I wanted to be a leader. You know, I wanted to be seen as someone who knew what was going on here at Dallas Seminary. And I heard something in one meeting, and then a day or two later, I shared that in another meeting. Big mistake. I remember my supervisor taking me off to the side and said, you know, Paul, that was confidential. That was privileged information. That was shared in a meeting that was to be kept quiet. Oh, I felt terrible. And I've never forgotten that rebuke. It was important, and I needed it. And then I was involved leading the spiritual formation program here for 12 years. The small groups, you know, sometimes really sensitive information is shared in a small group. And for 12 years, I saw at times how gossip could harm a small group. And now I'm serving in career services. We deal with issues of hiring and sometimes firing and sometimes people taking new jobs or leaving jobs. Very confidential, very classified, very sensitive information. I'll never forget one of the first times I was to meet a pastor, he was in Irving, and he said, is there any way we could meet, you know, on the other side of town, maybe Mesquite or Garland? I thought, what? why would I do that? You know, he's a pastor in Irving. Why would he want to meet in Mesquite or Garland? And then he said, well, you know, I haven't really announced this to the church yet. And I realized people sometimes don't want to be seen. They don't want to be seen meeting with me. <laughs> Think how I felt. <laughs> oh, I saw you were meeting with the director of career services. Are, what's going on? Are you leaving? I've had people tell me, hey, by the way, don't call me or email me at the church office. A closing story. There was a gossip who wanted to meet with a pastor because he struggled with gossip himself, and he knew this pastor to be one who could really keep confidences. He was known as having a church where there was no gossip grapevine, which is hard to do. And he went to meet with a church pastor in the pastor's home at the parsonage, and the pastor said, as you come to our meeting this afternoon, bring a down pillow. He thought, a down pillow, what am I, is he going to put me on the couch like a psychologist? What's going to happen? He took the down pillow and he took a knife and he ripped the down pillow open and laid it on the front door of the home. He said, now I want you to come back tomorrow afternoon at the same time. <laughs> Came back 24 hours later and the down pillow was half empty. You see, the feathers had scattered, some in the trees and some in the front yard and some all the way down the street. And the pastor said, now I want you to go retrieve all the feathers and bring them back and let's sew up the down pillow. And the congregant said, well, I could no more do that than I could put the toothpaste back in the toothpaste tube. And the pastor says, so it is with gossip. The Chinese proverb says, a gossip whispered in the ear can be heard 10,000 miles away. How are you doing it? Gossiping and gatekeeping. Are you a gossip? Or are you a gatekeeper? Loose lips sink ships. Idle chatter can destroy a church. 
Patrick's going to come and we're going to sing a song that includes some lyrics about using our words in a righteous way.